think the last time I came here, I didn't put those on. <laughs> Our scriptures today speak to me in a very real way. After the year and a half we've had, we are finally beginning to recover. And for those of you who don't know me that well, uh, my husband and I both work in long-term care. So the last year and a half was profound for us, as it was for everyone. Who would have thought that a year ago or so, simply seeing someone's face could have such an impact on our lives? We held our daughter Grace's birthday party yesterday and realized that just a few days before, June 24th, 2020, was the last time we had been in a restaurant. It's unbelievable. It has been a year of loss. The loss of people we care for, the loss of the strength we found when we gathered with friends and church members. We lost touch both literally and figuratively. We recently held a service of lamentations, putting words and music to all that we have felt all that we have lost. And as we read David's words in Samuel, we hear an echo of that service. We feel that profound sense of loss as David laments the deaths of Saul and Jonathan. In a previous part of the chapter, David rends his clothes when he learns of their deaths. And in his words, you feel both his love and his pain. As he says, Saul and Jonathan so well loved, so deeply cherished, in their lives and in their deaths, they were never separated. They were faster than eagles and stronger than lions. And there was David in his love and his pain, separated not only in death, but in his mourning. He couldn't even attend their burials and had to arrange for others to handle it. He mourned them from a distance. And that sounds awfully familiar to us, doesn't it? But the scripture today is more than just the Lamentations. We just celebrated our annual event at the Jewish Association on Aging where I work, and as part of the pro program, we used a song from Dear Evan Hansen. And as is always the way, I hear more in these songs than just a Broadway musical or a movie musical. I so often find God. We used a song called You Will Be Found, and the lyrics go in part, have you ever felt like nobody was there? Have you ever felt forgotten in the middle of nowhere? Have you ever felt like you could disappear? Like you could fall and no one would hear? Well, let that lonely feeling wash away. Maybe there's a reason to believe you'll be okay. Because when you don't feel strong enough to stand, you can reach, reach out your hand. Even when the dark comes crashing through, when you need a friend to carry you, and when you're broken on the ground, you will be found. Lift up your head and look around. You will be found. God is everywhere if we are open enough to see him. And we've gotten good at looking beyond the mask, right? We know who they are. We know who people are. And as children of God and people of faith, those words touch me as a tenant of our faith. We are found, found in the love of Christ and in his healing power. Even in our darkest moments, our faith can light away. Even if the road is long, more than a year long, our faith is longer. And with those words in our heart, we move to the gospel reading and it has a simple title, if you look at it in the Bible, Jesus Heals Two People. Sort of underwhelming in a title for what is about to happen. But not just two people, but two lessons for us today. A lesson in touch and a lesson in faith. Now I realize that to say touch has been a dirty word for about a year and a half. <laughs> But it's important is profound. We know the strength that comes from a hug, a handhold, the touch of your hand, of a hand on your shoulder as someone prays. The very definition of the verb touch is to come into or be in contact with. But that has been difficult. 
Medical journals throughout COVID made numerous studies on the impact of people experiencing what they termed touch starvation. We need connections. If we can't make them, we feel isolated, we feel depressed, we get sick. It's hard to get things done. If we can't make a physical connection, then we must make an emotional one. That touch, after all, is an integral part of our faith. I mean, despite the scripture, we're not likely to step off the Gateway Clipper and see Jesus standing there. I'm not expecting him on a one-on-one -on, -one on my home or have a chance to invite him to come, despite its messiness. Our connection to Christ, it's our emotional connection. We connect through, prayer, through prayers, through our hearts and in our souls, in what we know to be true. The woman with the bleeding illness was not a leader in the synagogue as Jairus was. She could not simply walk up to Jesus and ask him to heal her. Her illness had cast her down in society, so she had to find a more creative way to reach out, to reach out and touch Jesus. And yes, that is exactly the jingle I'm thinking of. Most everybody in this audience isn't too young to remember, reach out, reach out and touch someone. Probably AT&T's most successful campaign ever, one of the most successful campaigns, period, in all of advertising. The commercial I always remember the most is an African-American couple just sitting down to dinner. The kitchen table, the wife says, Joey called today. Her husband says, oh, that's nice. The Joey, I'm sorry, Joey called today? What's wrong? What's wrong with Joey? Nothing's wrong with Joey. What's wrong with Sally? Nothing's wrong with Sally. What's wrong with the kids? Nothing's wrong with the kids. Our son, 2,000 miles away, called, and there's nothing wrong? Well, why did he call? And his wife said, I asked him the same thing. And tearfully, she says, he just called because I love you, Mom. What's funny about that whole jingle is when you think about it, you're reaching out, reaching out and touching someone, but not physically. They made touching someone an experience, an emotional experience, a way to bridge the very gap of distance. Roughly 40 years after that campaign, COVID-19 had us again finding another way to reach out and touch someone. If Jesus can't take our hand, then we have to find a way to reach out and touch the hem of his clothes ourselves. When we couldn't touch each other physically, we faithfully sought other ways to be together. We learned to Zoom, to take ourselves on and off mute. We found fellowship in small squares on a computer screen. We visited through plexiglass and on porches. And in the end, we found faith takes even more shapes and sizes than we ever thought it could. And it is not just the touch that leads us to Jesus. The second idea in this scripture is maybe the greatest part of the scripture for us. It is the faith that carries us through fear, through pain, and into healing. When we look at both Jairus and the woman who had been ill for 12 years, we see two very different people, yet very similar levels of faith. They had heard the teachings of Jesus and they believed him. Their faith is what led them to find Jesus through the crowds. They knew that without a doubt, they could find healing in Jesus. We see Jarius pressing forward through a crowd of people at the shore. You can imagine him a little breathless, saying quickly and succinctly, my, my daughter is about to die. Please, please come. Your hands on her. Please place your hands on her so that she can be healed. And Jesus went with him. 
These are just a few words, but they're very powerful. When you see and hear what Jairus says, there is no doubt in his mind that when Jesus places his hands on his daughter, she will live. There's no explanation, no exegesis. Jesus doesn't ask him, what makes you think so? How do you know? Jesus knows his heart instantly. And Jairus knew with capital letters what Jesus could do. And I love that there is simply no discussion. Maybe in my mind I see Jesus give a little head nod and off they went. There is no discussion with the disciples of what will happen, what the day is to bring. It is simply Jesus went with him. That same faith is echoed in the woman who touched him in the crowd. She had seen physicians, spent all her money, and still she suffered. After 12 years, where does she find hope? Then she hears of Jesus, and like Jairus, her belief in Jesus is absolute. Her disease has likely made her weak, yet she pushed her way through the crowd to be near Jesus as he passed. She could not step forward and ask Jesus to be healed, but she knew he had the power to heal her. And as she reached out, the most assured thought was in her mind, if I can just touch his clothes, I'll be healed. Again, that definitive statement, I'll be healed. There's no question, no doubt. Her thought is not perhaps, or I might be. It is clear, I will be healed. And so she was. Now the woman could have disappeared into the crowd, but when Jesus stops the procession and asks who touched him, she steps forward, falls to her knees, and tells Jesus everything. She's terrified. He has the power to heal her. Surely he has the power to take it back. Will he rebuke her? Will he find her unworthy? No. He raises her before the crowd, and for all to hear, he tells her, your faith has healed you. Your faith. Go in peace. The crowd needed no more lesson for that day. The faith of that woman brought her to Jesus, gave her the courage to touch his garment, and that faith in Jesus Christ healed her. And while we find this to be a wonderful teachable moment, as the phrase goes, the delay is costly to Jairus. Now we know that Christ would not have stopped, would not have delayed at the cost of Jairus' daughter. But can you imagine Jairus in those moments? As a parent, I'm anxious and twitchy just thinking about it. You can almost see him, steps ahead and then, I'm sorry, what? He's doing, um, we can find her after, we, have, we must have to go. You can see him wringing his hands waiting, and then the word comes to him. Your daughter has died. You can imagine the look on his face. And then at that moment, there's a complete reversal of his encounter with Jesus. Now it is Jesus who speaks and Jairus who follows. He simply turns to him and says, don't be afraid. Just keep trusting. A simple reminder to Jairus that it was his faith that had brought him to Jesus in the first place, and it is, and it is his faith that will see him through. So despite what they had been told, they continue home. Jesus takes the parents and his few disciples, and they touch 
the child, and she is arisen. You might say that a touch of faith goes a terribly long way in our lives. And we have been both touched and changed in this last year. Our faith has been tested by loss, by distance, by the sheer wading through of it all. Our touches are so much more precious now. We don't take a, a handshake or a smile lightly. But oh, what we've also accomplished in this time. A full-on virtual ministry system, remote worship, reconnections with people miles away. We can now be in a sanctuary both together and apart. Do you want a number of what faith and love can do? In January at a board meeting, we totaled up in our three residential facilities from March of 2020 to January of 2021 that we had conducted over 7,000 virtual and window visits in that time to bring together approximately 350 people to their families, to their loved ones. Here in this partnership, we didn't miss a Sunday. And in the process, we created something brand new. Faith is never simple, but it is always powerful. They say you cannot go more than three days without water. I don't think I can go one day without faith. There is not one person in this sanctuary that did not lose something during COVID. Maybe it was someone you loved. Maybe it was a job. Maybe it was a milestone moment. Having faith doesn't keep us from those losses. But our faith reminds us there is so much more to come. So when you don't feel strong enough to stand, just reach, reach out in faith, and God will touch you in whatever way that he can. May your faith be your, your touchstone this day and always. Amen.